Hello, in this video we'll have a little review of the lesson we had this morning. Now, before we talk about the reading section, I will give you your general results for the use of English section. This is a summary of your results. We have parts 2, parts 3 and 4 of the test and you can see on the first line at the bottom the average of correct answers that all of the group obtained and as you can see in uh, part 2 you had an average of 5.61 of a total of 8 correct answers in part 3 you had 5.92 out of a total again of 8 correct responses and finally in part 4 you have 7.9 out of 12 correct answers now let's see what percentage of correct answers you obtain in, in each section as you can see this is the line that you see at the top for part 2 you got a 70% of correct answers for part 3 74% and for, for part 4 66% so this means that the lowest score that you got was for part 4 you got only 66% of the correct answers as a group and then the second most difficult task for you was the one in part 2 these are the general results that you obtain and basically what it means is that you need to review these two skills So you need to remember for uh, next time before we take the second practice test. I would like you to review basically these two skills. The keyword sentence transformation, changing sentences, keeping the same meaning, and number two, of course, filling a missing word in a text using contextual discourse and grammatical clues. Remember that for this one, you need to look for uh, articles in, um, in different newspapers or magazines and then eliminate every tenth word replace it with a blank and practice trying to remembering or getting the words that go in each blank now concerning the results as they refer to the level of the common European framework of reference I can tell you that 21 people which represents 29% of the whole group obtain a score of B1 or below Whereas 31 of you obtain the level B2, that represents 42% of the total group. And finally, which is even better, 21 of you obtain the level C2, which represents the 20% of our group. So if you see, in general terms, we had a high percentage of people who obtained the level B2 or the level C1. So this is good but it also means that we need to continue to practice and that we need to see the results that we have in the other sections now my general suggestions for the group is if you are one of those people who got a C1 congratulations that's really good and the only thing that I have to tell you is that you should keep practicing to make sure that you have a good level on the test and of course the fact of practicing will allow you to compensate on any other skill where you may have l you know a, l a lesser degree of competence now if you are one of those people who obtain B2 this is good these are good results but I s also suggest that you will be on practice a little harder because you have to remember that in a real situation you're going to be under a lot of stress and maybe your results could be a little lower so you need to make sure that you will get the B2 in a real test situation now finally if you are one of those people who got B1 or below you shouldn't get discouraged because you can still get the level B2 if you are stronger on other skills you can compensate for this it doesn't really matter if you have one B1 in on one of the skills now what I also like to suggest to you is that you consider taking additional language courses because if you got B1 in this section this means that you need to improve a little bit your level and this necessarily goes by general language courses this doesn't mean 
that you're in a really bad situation it only means that you need to work a little harder and you will get to the desired level okay so let's go to the reading section now parts one five six and seven of the reading and use of english test your reading comprehension skills there are four different kinds of tasks the first one is a multiple choice clause very similar to the ones that you have in the previous part of the test right? but in this case you have a multiple choice task that means that you have blanks and you can select out of four options where you can find the correct answer now in part five you will find another multiple choice exercise but this time is the text is a little longer it's between 450 and 500 words but then then again it is a multiple choice task so it should be relatively easy to complete now for part six there will be a gap text that means a text with gaps and you have to place the sentences that have been removed from each paragraph that means that in every paragraph a sentence is going to be missing and you need to find which a sentence belongs to which paragraph now finally part seven of the reading and use of english section will complete will contain a multiple matching task and in this case what you have to do is you're going to have, have four short text followed by 10 statements and you have to relate each statement to the different text where they belong okay so we're going to be looking at some examples so you can get a better idea of what the tasks are about now I will tell you about the constructs that are measured in the reading section of the test one of the important things that are going to be assessed here are your programmatic competence in other words you need to be able to find the purpose of a text as well as the opinions that are implicitly or explicitly stated on a text you need to be able to find the tone that the author has whether it is optimistic or pessimistic ironic uh, angered or disappointed your pragmatic competence will be also assessed in terms of your ability to inference to get the hidden meaning of a text that means that you should be able to find things that are not clearly stated but can be inferred from something else that is explicit in the text and finally you will be required to find the different links that the test has by completing or finding the reference the reference to which um, the different pronouns the different adverbs the different connectors are direct to now for reading another important part is related to discourse and in this case you will be asked to find to determine the text structure this is particularly true of part six in which you have to find the sentences that are missing from different paragraphs so for this you need to be able to understand the structure of the text and to find the elements that are missing and you will also have to um, make use of your ability to identify different cohesion and coherence elements in the text such as pronouns anaphoric or cataphoric reference or the different kinds of logical connectors so that is the construct but now let's see what these strategies or what these reading abilities really mean okay so basically if we summarize the most important skills that are going to be tested in this section of the test are reading for guests that means 
getting the global idea of a text. Number two, reading for main points. That means that in a given text, you need to find the most important pieces of information. Another skill would be reading for detailed understanding. And this means that for some parts of the text or for some text, you will need to be able to understand every single little part of a given unit of the text. There's also reading for specific information. And as different from reading for gist or main points, in this case, you need to look for some specific thing that you be that you are asked about. Parts number five and six, of course, relate to deducing meaning. That means that sometimes you will be required to guess the meaning of a word according to the context or to find what a given pronoun or what a different demonstrative referred to. And finally, number six, following a narrative is another very important skill and this is related to finding the different um, linkers of a story the, the parts that tell you how the text is structured from the beginning to the end now something that is good about Cambridge exams is that they use authentic tasks tasks that we use in everyday life and I am going to show you some activities that we do on an everyday basis that are related to the skills that I previous, previous, previously mentioned for example looking for a location on a department store floor guide or looking up a word in the dictionary looking at the front page of a newspaper on a bus just a few minutes before you stop you know like when you just look at the newspaper to find important information number three reading a short story you know uh, any kind of fiction number four assembling something using an instruction manual you know following all of these uh, instructions number five selecting a movie on netflix by reading brief descriptions this is something that we do like almost every day we open Netflix and then say well what am I going to see and then we just look at the uh, descriptions of the movies finding for specific information that we need in order to select to decide which movie we're going to watch and finally for example something that will happen when you look at a sign in a foreign language right so in this case if you see these are everyday activities that we could be required to do and in each of these activities we're going to use different reading strategies for example number one looking for a location on a department store flow guide requires reading for specific information I'm only f trying to find one specific piece of information so the rest of the text the rest of the information will be useless for me because I'm focusing just on finding what I'm looking for this is a particular kind of reading now for the second one when we look at the newspaper of course um, we do so just to get the guess the main idea of the information that means that we don't want we're not looking for anything in particular right and we're not trying to understand everything we're just looking at the main global idea of the different stories so that we know what's happening in the world for example so, or what's happening in Puebla but we're just going to take a quick look here and there you know very random very unsystematic and we'll stop to read probably with more detail in the specific parts that we are interested in but from the very beginning when we just look at the newspaper we just want to get the main things okay so um, the main global idea this will be written for guests now reading a short story in this case, of course, uh, we use the skill of following a narrative. And this is a very particular kind of reading. So every time that we read a book with a story or a novel or a short story or any other kind of fiction, we normally are required to pay particular attention to the events that happen because we need to see how the story progresses, like how 
all of the things in the story relate and how it develops. So it's a very particular kind of reading that is very different from reading for specific information or reading for guests. Now, uh, for number four, like you want to assemble something or build something or make something using an instruction manual. If you see in this case, the reading is different because here you want to read and get a detailed understanding of the text because if you don't follow the instructions in the appropriate way something could be wrong okay your cake could be burned or um, your computer will, could ma malfunction or you cannot install your software things like that so in this case we want to read and we want to understand every single detail to make sure that the final result of following these instructions can be effective now for number five, selecting a movie on Netflix by reading brief, brief descriptions. For this kind of thing, if you see, we have like very different short descriptions of something. And what we're looking for, of course, is the main points that we're interested in. So we're going to compare and contrast different uh, information, different pieces of information, so that we can find the movie that is more appropriate to the kind of interest, to the kind of preferences that we have in that moment so this kind of reading is very different from reading a manual from reading a novel or a story from reading the newspaper or from reading you know um a floor guide to a store or to looking uh, uh, from looking uh, up a word in the dictionary now finally looking at a sign in a foreign language sometimes there are things that we don't understand but we based on the context based on the situation and based on our experience the experience that we have of, of the world and of the culture we can deduce meaning so also when you're reading a text in english you don't necessarily have to understand every single word you can find out you can infer the meaning of a words depending on the context depending on the topic and depending on what was previously said in the text So, I will tell you now the kind of text that you will find in the reading section of Cambridge's B2 First. Basically, there will be some newspapers and magazine articles. There could also be some reports, some fragments, some uh, ex excerpts from uh, fiction, such as novels or short stories. You will also find advertisements, letters, and messages and some kind of information materials in general such as manuals, guides and uh, brochures. Concerning the length of the text, basically in part 1 there will be a short text between 180 and 200 words but in parts 5, 6 and 7 there will be longer text. That means that all of the text together will be between 450 and 500 words okay of course part number seven includes four or five short text but all of the text together will be between 450 and 500 words so in this part you will have to deal with longer pieces of writing I will show you some examples of each of the parts part one you will find a little text and some blanks this is very similar like I said to what you found in the use of English section but the advantage of course is that in this case you will have some options to select from so if you see for every question there will be options for options for you to select the best answer so it is relatively easier than the things that you did in part in parts two and three of the test and basically what is going to be measured what is going to be assessed is your ability to identify the structure collocations phrasal verbs and complementation of verbs now for part five you will find a longer text and you will have multiple choice questions in this case what is being assessed is your ability
to understand the main idea, the details of the text, to infer meaning, to find the tone of the author or the purpose, and guessing vocabulary from context. It is very important to mention that in part 5, every correct answer is worth 2 points. Now for part 6, you will find a text in which some sentences have been removed from the different paragraphs. Okay? The text again is a little longer between 450 and 500 words and then the task that you have to do is to place the correct sentences in the correct paragraph. What is being assessed here is your ability to identify the structure of the text so that you know where the sentences belong and also for cohesion and coherence. And then again, in part 6, every correct answer has two marks. Something else that I have to tell about this section is that you will find seven sentences and six gaps. So this means that each of the sentences will belong to a different paragraph, right? But one of the sentences will not be used. So there is an extra sentence that will not be used and that is the tricky part. You need to see which of those sentences do not belong in the text. Now let's look at the final part, part 7. In this case we have a multiple matching task and the skill that is going to be assessed is reading for details and specific information as well as finding opinion and inferences. In this part, one correct answer carries just one mark. Now there's also something interesting about this section because you have four short texts and you have 10 statements or questions so this means that you're going to match 4 to 10 different questions so for example question 43 could be D and then question 44 could be C and then question 45 B and 46 A but then there will be different answers that belong in different paragraphs. So if you see in this case for part A you find you will find three answers for B just two for C two and then you will find three for part D. So this is a multiple matching task. It is relatively easy because it, this is very similar to the kind of task that I told you before when you look for a movie on Netflix. Imagine that these are descriptions of the movie, the little text, and then the questions will be ideas from the movies, like in which movie there is a famous actress and then you need to find in which of them. So this is the task that you will find in part 7 of the use of English and reading section of Cambridge first. Now how can we prepare for this part? Well the thing is that you need to read. You need to read for real articles so I suggest that you select some from uh, The Guardian, The Observer, The Times or any other British newspapers or magazines and then you can select some articles that are between 150 and 500 words long like not too long either like something relatively man manageable that is similar to the ones that are shown in the in exam and finally you are going to practice all of the different reading strategies that I mentioned before. Okay? It is very important that you practice authentic reading, that you read 
materials that were not designed for teaching, that were not designed for test, because this is the kind of information that you're going to be tested on. So the last thing that I have to tell you is just to summarize that reading is assessed on parts 1, 5, 6, and 7 on the reading and use of English section and also that in parts 1 and part 7 the correct answers are worth just one mark whereas in parts 5 and 6 every correct answer carries two points there are in total 42 points okay and to obtain the level B2 the only thing that you need is a score of 24 correct answers so then again what I'm saying here this is perfectly possible you can get 24 correct answers out of 42 I think this is doable this is perfectly possible but you need to remember that if you want to succeed at the reading part you need to increase the quality and the quantity of your reading activities in general you have to read something in English every day this will help you a lot to improve in this part so this was all for this lesson see you next time and good luck with your practice exercise